Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Bye. Bye. Ladies These people. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Daryl Zeus. And I'm Lorian. And we're here to talk about wait, who's paper rock scissoring? No, no, oh, no. Does that work? Talk, why are we here? We're here to talk about work from home and the top ten tips about how to work from home. No, so no more top tens, please. So, uh, so Megan, you took notes on your amazing OneNote uh, analog form. What are we talking about? So um, now I've shared this with everyone. Can you not? Can you not see it? No, um, no. So no, in all it's seriousness. We had a chat about some of the current challenges with the situation and the first thing we thought we wanted to talk about was how in our roles as consultants, internal, external and all that, how we've had to change our approach rapidly in the last week, two weeks, month or essentially probably the last fortnight. So um, who wants to start? So let's go to Daryl. Um, how has your role been impacted as in how have you had to rapidly just ignore him? I will ignore him. Uh, he's <laughs> just just mode. Um, what, what, uh, we were engaged um, in our workplace. Um, we work with customers and, and we're always rolling out bits and pieces for, for teams and adoption programs. Um, we were going to be running a project internally um, for Datacom. Um, and uh, that was going to take a, a leisurely approach be able to engage people at the right pace in a sorry, what was it? A strategic versus uh, tactical. Tact tactical. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we were strategically, we we're going to take our, our pace, slowly getting people um, up to speed. We have had to switch to tactical and creating content quickly and, and addressing things rapidly in, in four different ways. And it's just, yeah, that's the pressure. Everything well, that was going to fit in this. Well, and I found from a governance perspective, I'm all about deploy things properly, methodically, programmatically, plan it out, do it once, do it properly, um, think through things in detail. And what I've effectively been greeted with over the last couple of weeks is we need to deploy now. What do we need to do to be able to deploy now? Um, which basically I have to swallow my, I wouldn't say pride, I have to swallow my my you know, desires and hopes that people actually think through their teams deployment. I've had to become very tactical and say, turn this off, turn this off, turn this off, do this, do this, do this, go. And then I'll be mm. with you afterwards when we have to clean everything up again. And it's interesting because obviously I work quite closely with Lorian um, because we work in the same company and um, you're blurry, by the way, you keep moving. You're blurry, yeah. just letting you know. There we go, your camera's kicked in. Um, but we both have, I guess, the similarities in our role probably that we both work at a strategic level. I do, you know, longer term strategy for adoption programs, you know, and how do we want to look at, say, the roadmap he develops from a technical perspective and think about the journey for the users. Um, and my, I probably wear a couple of hats because I'm very strategic, but at the same time, I do step into training if we have overflow. Um, this week, I've, I trained three days last week full time because um, similarly, it was, whoop, okay, longer term views have to shelf because it's now urgent what, what has to happen this week for customers and how can we help them urgently kick things into gear. And several projects within two days were, were going big bang tonight help us deal with it, help us cope. So it was a very, very rapid change. Yeah. And even one of those projects I was on, which and I kept saying, hey, do you want to just stage this? So maybe do these offices here and then those offices there. We can make it do, you know, you went, no, big bang, all in one go, 900 people, single shot. Oh, okay. I, bet, so, I mean, how about yourself? Like you were, uh, you were saying before about how you've got projects that are in flight and desires to go to this, but now all of a sudden you have to change that. Yeah, so I'm the I'm the non-consultant on the call, and what was really um, great in our organisation was with our established digital workplace, I had very little involvement in our workforce mobilising to to work from home over the course of a weekend because we were effectively set up for that already. Um, not that people always worked from home, but the, our technology was already in a place where people could do that um, very well and very quickly, which is amazing. Um, what was interesting though, is because we're still predominantly on Skype for Business, we've got a few people using Teams and we're planning on, oh my God, I know, right? <laughs> Um, we're, you know, we, we're wanting to do a, a strategic and well thought out rollout of teams. And the question was brought up, um, do we move to teams? And I was like, well, no, 
um, if, if it came to it that the powers that be said, hey, Rebecca, we need to do this now, I, I would mobilise and I, I do the job. But my advice back to the business, which thus far has been taken, is we are set up with our current technology. Um, we're in the midst of a crisis and trying to support our team and our customers. Why would we go and push to teams um, when effectively we, we don't need to because we're good for the moment and we've got much better things to be worrying about? And I think that's a valid point is you've already got a working solution that sure, maybe it's not ideal because we'd love to be on teams, but it works. So why rock the boat and introduce change that, yes, while better, is almost unnecessary at this particular juncture. And so I think that we, the, the three of us consultants on the call, what we're kind of faced with is this approach and Daryl, you and I were talking about on the weekend was we just have to go along with whatever the customer wants and needs whatever yeah. it, it doesn't matter just whatever's going to get you going um our best of practices our desires for this and our com you know daryl and i were talking about you know strategic objectives from a change perspective and programs like nope just training just train people on how to do what they need to do mm -hmm. to get by this week next week yeah. and we'll deal with the i, I think up. i i've managed to use a blender that um internally but also for customers that um everyone's looking around going what are you doing what are you doing where are you starting how are you going to make make a start um we have still stuck with a few techno techniques and, and strategies that do work because it gives a scale um i've got to get six thousand people across the across the line internally um i'm not going to be able to do that by rifling people through training and, and helping them to understand something and they're only going to remember 10 percent so we have we have built uh, the champions network. People have stuck their hand up immediately and said, "I know something. I'm going to help people." We have tried to establish our communications channels and make sure that I'm not having side conversations with one person about their needs for half an hour. But we we'll say, "Look, is this going to be something we can repeat to everyone?" Right. Then let's use a Yammer group. Let's use another medium that's going to get that message out there. So it's a blend. It's not perfect. I think is is the the theme between us all. We can't get it perfect, but we're, we're going to do our best to try and at least get scale and communicate through channels that that help us. And, and so if that? I can I've just got a say, question. no, it, well, you go. I was just going to say, you just made me think, Daryl, because you're right. Um, if it was just a mere reaction and it was get it live, it would be here are the training videos, go. Um, mm. But we haven't done that, even though it's been a crisis and it's been urgent. For example, with a lot of with the customers we've worked with, we've kind of taken, well, if it was in an ideal situation, we'd do a six month champions program and here's how we'd stage them into it and, and the things we'd teach them. And we've actually just gone, what parts of that could we put in four weeks as an example? Yeah. And so you're right. We're taking an approach and saying, how could we lean this out and how can we add value um, for this reactive situation. And I just wanted to add well, one thing that's been really interesting, people are wanting it. So, you know, if it was a year ago and we were going live with the teams and we're running training, they'd be like, oh, there's another tool. You know, I don't want to, I can't be bothered. I, every session I'm running right now, I did one this morning, 55 people dialed in because 55 people went, please help me. I need to learn this tool. Um, so mm -hmm. that's what's been fascinating is that people are really, really super motivated. And I think that, um... The, the challenge we also kind of have to embrace or the, the challenge organizations have to face is um, either are you shoving everything down people's throat because and saying simply suck it up, you just have to accept all this change because normally we look at change fatigue or change whiplash, whereas now it's a case of, I'm sorry, we're all in this situation together. You mm. just need to accept it um, and do your best. Or it's a case of kind of like where, um, Beck, where you're the opposite, which was, nope, freeze stop not taking stuff on board just working with what we've got so i think organizations have to kind of balance that out go what's important what you know what is a priority for us right now yeah the so answer is always it depends right so when an organization oh, comes to you with what the question awesome. is the answer is it depends it's specific to every single individual and organization look at you you're that's really hard to hear consulting. though isn't it it is i, I think really want to it depends t-shirt don't, don't you think that's hard to hear though right now when, when they're looking for guidance and they say, and we come back and say, it depends. I think we need to come back with, here's the top five things that everyone needs to mm. do. Yep. And we know there's mm. going to be a need for customization later or you know, shaping things, but you're going to need somewhere to communicate. You're going to need somewhere to have your meetings. You're going to need somewhere to work on your current files right now. Let's just address those three basic needs, those three basic scenarios and make sure that everyone does that boot camp 
and gets to that yep. level. Yes. And I think I, that's the point is what's important to you now, yeah. not and, in the future, yeah. now. And yeah. I think if you went to, I can feel definitely if you have a conversation with an organisation right now and say they ask for something and we say, okay, well, could we work through blah, blah, blah. It's almost like in their brain, they just want to head on to the other vendor that will say ABC. So right now, never before, it's direct, tell us what we need and then tell us what we need to do next week and the week after because everyone's under, it's a pressure cooker and um, they can't think you know, everyone's so stressed out. They've got 10 other things that are falling apart that they need to deal exactly. with. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. So final thoughts from everyone. What have we done our final thoughts? Um, when, I when would you... say... Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, my rant, my, my rant on the spot final thought would be um, just because they're only doing it this week doesn't mean that's the success of the project, as in just go with the now because it can grow and adapt and, and you can keep supporting. Yeah. My final thought is, you know, we're talking legitimate crisis situation here. So, um, you know, respond with the crisis hat and then you do your, you know, your post-crisis review and um, and tie up all your loose ends then. I think there's advantages for some organisations in, in this move, um, even in these awful circumstances. But, yeah, it's, it's a crisis, so react in that way. One of your tactics, um, above all, is bear human. <laughs> as you're helping people. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get into this in another topic, but um, one, if we're being changing from strategic to tactical, one tactic has to be, you know, just have some patience and treat people with, with some respect because they are dealing with a heck of a lot right now. Yeah, and compassion, absolutely. And yeah, my final thing would be what you guys have all said, so. I think I have to say I can't oh, wait. I can't wait till we can give people a hug. How good is it going to be when the, when because oh, the one thing you want to do in a crisis is help someone and give them a hug. So I can't wait. <laughs> oh, oh. Enough. Enough. make everyone hey. jealous. <laughs> mm. They're right, having right, un better. illegal hugging. <laughs> make them stop. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> rub his head, just rub his forehead. Give him a chrome dome. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>